Hey guys, I did a couple videos on AM alignment for this GE212 radio. One technique using a sweep generator and a scope, and the other using an RF generator and a VTVM. I figured I might as well do the FM side. Now that you can also do both visually and uh, with a meter, but I'm really going to focus on the visual. FM radios are much easier to align with a sweep generator and a scope as you'll see as the video progresses. So uh, first thing I, I, got, I need to do is uh, I got my sweep generator, I've had it running for a while so it's warmed up, likewise with the radio, and I need to uh, pick up here, it's the first step of the FMIF alignment. Uh, now the uh, the in intermediate frequency for FM in this radio is 10.7 megahertz, uh, as opposed to 455 kilohertz for the uh, AM portion. So I've got my sweep generator uh, on the 10.7 megahertz sweep setting, and I need to connect the output to pin one of the six BJ6 tube, which I've got clipped in right there. And I need to attach my scope. Let's see. It says note one. Where are my notes? Let's see. Connect vertical plates of scope to the limiter cathode pin two or seven of V4 through a 200K resistor and ground. And you're supposed to attach a 8 to 10 microfarad capacitor between the junction of C21 and R11 and ground. Alright, that's a bit more complicated than I did for the AM alignment, so I'll have to get out some parts and do a little soldering, it sounds like. I read this a little bit closer and noticed that it specifies a pyranol capacitor. I had to look that up online. A pyranol capacitor is a non-polarized oil-filled capacitor. I believe a type that contained a lot of PCBs. Well, I went through my non-polarized larger caps and the biggest one I could find is a one microfarad. So I'm going to use an old trick, which is to take two polarized electrolytic capacitors and connect the two positive leads together and then use the two negative leads, which forms a non-polarized capacitor. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that when you connect capacitors in series, you're going to cut the capacity in half. So I grabbed a couple 22s, which will give me about 11 microfarads. So that's yeah, pretty close to 10. That should be fine. And I got my 200K resistor, and now I need to solder those into the circuits. Okay, I followed the directions, and I hooked up my scope through a 200K resistor. And I connected in that non-polarized capacitor. And got my sweep generator hooked up, and there's the blob I've got on my scope. Now the first step they say to do is adjust tuning slugs of T4 for maximum amplitude. Now keep in mind that these specific instructions will vary from radio to radio, so be sure and get a copy of the alignment instructions for your radio. But uh, I imagine it will be somewhat similar, uh, uh, certainly when it comes to tweaking the IF coils for maximum amplitude. Uh, for an alignment tool, I'm using a piece of plastic. The ends are filed down to form like a flat bladed screwdriver. There's a tuning slug at the top and the bottom of each can. So I insert the tool and then rotate it to get maximum peak. It's a little hard to do this one handed. <laughs> Way. Right about there. And now I'll do the coil on the other side. So I think that's about it. Right there. Alright, step two. Same 
settings in the sweep generator, connected to pin 1 as I've already got it, and now we adjust T3, which is the second FM can, which is this guy here. Do the same. Now, as I've been tweaking these coils, I've noticed that they're pretty well dead on as they are, which is pretty common on radios, you know, unless somebody's been mucking around with it or you've had to repair the coils themselves. They're probably pretty well within spec already. Alright. Now I've got to move the signal generator over to and pin 1 of V2, the 12BE6, and it says to C note 7. Alright, what is note 7? Ugh. <laughs> to align the first IF transformer, it is necessary to disconnect the copper strap from the 12BE6 at the 2 pin connection. After aligning T1, resolder the copper strap. Alright, well that would be this tube here. And ah, here's the copper strap they're talking about. So they're saying I need to disconnect this from that pin. That eh, can be a little tricky. Just like to put down the camera while I try to figure that out. Hopefully, I can just heat this up, and that strap will separate away from the tube. That actually wasn't too hard. I just heated up the strap with my soldering iron, and it did fall away from the tube pin. So now I am ready to continue and I need to adjust T1 for maximum amplitude and let's see, T1 is this guy. So once again, and right about there and go to the bottom. Right about there. Alright. Now I need to undo what I just did and resolder that strap and take out the capacitor and that resistor and move my signal uh, input over to V3 and uh, then I can continue. Okay, we're finally at the point where having a sweep generator and a scope makes this a lot easier. What I've got here is the output of the FM discriminator, and we need to do three things. One, maximize the amplitude of this pulse. Two, we want to make it symmetrical so that the positive and the negative pulse are equal in amplitude. And third, we want to make this line here as steep as possible. And you can do that with a meter, but you have to set your RF generator to various points, take meter readings, and kind of plot this out. And uh, every time you make adjustments, you got to go back and forth and back and forth to make sure it's symmetrical and whatnot. Much easier to just look at a picture on a scope. All right, first we need to adjust the discriminator coil primary for maximum amplitude. And that is on the bottom here. So, the other way. So it's about there. And now adjust the secondary for symmetry. Ah, that looks a lot better. And now you're supposed to go back and tweak the primer, and you kind of go back and forth to uh, get that looking as symmetrical as possible. The scope lead fell off. Alright. Ah, that's getting better. 
Now you want to get that line to be steep. What they mean is you don't want it to be like that. You want to get that really sharp and distinct. And go back and do the other side. And I'll keep going back and forth doing this until I get that to be as symmetrical and steep as possible. I spent a few more minutes tweaking that discriminator coil and I think that's looking pretty darn good now. And that is the last step uh, for the FM alignment in this radio. So how about we give it a listen? All right, there we have it. Radio sounds great. I'm pulling in plenty of stations. So I hope you found these tips useful and uh, maybe you can give your radio an alignment too. Your home, your authorized ADT dealer. You'll get.